Thank you, Ola. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is please scan the QR code that you see on your screen. It will take you to a mentee where we ask you the question, what is the first word that comes to your mind when you think of nature restoration? Or you can follow the link that my colleagues have put in the chat. And we're going to start looking at the answers. So what do we see? We see biodiversity, of course. It's very interlinked, recovery, resilience, healthy ecosystem, turning point, system change, of course, very important, planet before profit, that's nice, bring nature back, intergeneration equity, that's in exactly what we're doing at Generation Climate Europe, fresh air, urgent, revival, flourishing youth, that's perfect, that will be the topic of our, our event today. So great, great to see that we have so many inspirations for, for this, this starting activity. And I think we can start the event. I suppose you can all see my screen in case you cannot, please somebody avert me. Um, so once again, welcome to Generation Climate Europe, um, European Parliament Youth Dialogue on the Nature Restoration Law. Uh, the agenda of today is as following. First, what is the aim of the day? The aim is to strengthen the dialogue between youth and the European Parliament to support the adoption of an ambitious and youth inclusive EU nature restoration law. We're starting right now with the check-in. If you just arrived, we just shared a menti that was asking the, the people what comes to your mind when they hear nature restoration. And we saw a lot of different entries like biodiversity, resilience, youth, et cetera, which is very interesting for us to see. Um, we're gonna now do the introduction of the European Parliament Youth Dialogue. What is, a, uh, what is the EPID? Who is GCE? And also slowly presenting the speakers from 1710 until 1720, our, our colleague, my colleague, Julia Costa will do the introduction statement about youth in the nature restoration law or positions and demands. Afterwards, we will dive into the discussion with the MEPs, uh, starting with a video from MEP Christine Schneider, unfortunately, who cannot be here today, but who was so, so friendly to send us a video of three to four minutes. And the discussion is going to revolve around the question, how can the youth be involved in the adoption and implementation of the nature restoration law? From 1745 until 1755, then we have 10 minutes for a QAA with the participants. And finally, we're going to do a closing statement and the conclusions. So um, I just want to point out that we have also our MEP, Cesar Luena, who is here today. He requested translation from Spanish to English. So on the bottom of, your doc of the screen, you can find the um, the icon with, with uh, translation. So when Mr. Luena will speak in Spanish, you can click for English translation and, and Mr. Luena, please um, go into the translation from English to Spanish. So quickly introducing what is a European Parliament Youth Dialogue and why do we need it? So basically the EPID aims to strengthen the relations between young citizens in the European Union and their representative mostly members of the European Parliament, the European Parliament being the only representative organ of the European Union, by giving multiple opportunities during the year to interact and discuss key policies. It's not the first time that we're organizing this event. It is the, the fourth version. The first uh, was in May 2021 around the EU emissions trading system. The second was in October 2021 about decarbonizing agriculture. And the third one was in November 2021 the EU's just transition around the topic of climate justice. So who are we? Who is Generation Climate Europe? We're the largest coalition of youth-led networks at the European level, representing the voices of over 20 million young people with multiple member organization whose icons you can see on the bottom of your screen. And on the main working areas that we're active in, are five clean mobility, circular economy, sustainable development, biodiversity, and climate justice. So today we're under the biodiversity working area in the nature restoration team. So we are really, really happy to be able to welcome two members of European Parliament today. 
Uh, Mrs. Jutta Paulus, who is shadow reporter on the nature restoration law from the group Greens EFR, and Mr. Cesar Luena, who is the rapporteur on the nature restoration law from the group SND. So maybe we can start with Mrs. Jutta Paulus, if you can just introduce yourself in 30 seconds, one minute, and maybe tell us what did you think of uh, when you hear the, the word nature restoration. Hello, my name is Jutta Paulus. I'm a German MEP sitting for the Greens in the European Parliament since 2019, working a lot on climate and biodiversity issues. And when I heard nature restoration first, my, my first emotion was joy because we are the continent that has destroyed the most of its ecosystems already. So it's high time that we start restoring ours before we tell other countries to stop destroying nature on, on their continents. That's great. Thank you very much for this insight. Maybe Mr. Cesar Luena, if you would like to tell us a bit about yourself and what did you think of um, when you hear the, the, the term of nature restoration? And here, once again, please, everybody, like I said at the beginning, you have to go into the translation. I think that one of my colleagues has put the, the guideline how to access translation. So you have to go into the, the yeah, participant is said to speak in language to English. Perfect. So now you have to go into the translation to English, which is at the icon on the bottom of your screen. I believe Cesar Luena will be joining a bit later and is not here yet because he was in a previous okay. meeting. Okay. Well, then I suppose we can continue. In the meantime, um, well, Julia, since you started talking, I think you can also continue now um, explaining what what is the position of GC about in the nature restoration law and basically what is also the EU nature restoration law. So the floor is yours. Great, thank you. So welcome everyone. I'm Julia and I'm a project officer at, in the Biodiversity Working Group at Generation Climate Europe. And I'll just start off by giving a brief introduction on what the EU nature restoration law is and its significance, and then why youth should be considered when we talk about nature restoration. And then finally presenting our position um, and our demands to make sure that youth is meaningfully engaged um, in the EU nature restoration law. So I'll give a brief overview of the nature restoration law because I know many of you will already be familiar with it. But just as a quick reminder, in June last year, the European Commission published a proposal for a brand new law, which is gonna be dedicated to repairing and bringing back nature in the EU. This law was actually first announced in the EU's biodiversity strategy, which was published in 2020, and it aims to strengthen action to reverse biodiversity loss across Europe. And this is because the EU has so far missed its target to restore nature. It had a target to restore 15% of degraded ecosystems by 2020, but nature across the EU and the benefits that it delivers to people are still being lost to this day at an alarming rate. In fact, around 80% of habitats and over 60% of species in the EU are in poor or bad conservation status. So clearly, while we, of course, need to protect the nature that's left, there's now a very urgent need to restore what's already been degraded. And this is what this law aims to do. The aim is to contribute to the long-term recovery of habitats and species in the EU. And to do so, it outlines a set of legally binding targets that cover forest, wetland, river, marine, agricultural, and urban ecosystems. And importantly, not only do these targets strengthen the conservation of ecosystems that are currently already protected by EU policies, they also create additional requirements to conserve those that are currently not protected by EU laws. So the targets when combined should drive restoration on at least 20% of the EU's territory by 2030. This is the overarching EU level target. And you will have noticed that I refer to it as a proposal and this is because the law is currently at the proposal stage. It's going through the EU's legislative process and has not been adopted yet. So it's currently being negotiated by the European Parliament and the Council of the European Union. We at GC strongly support the adoption of this proposal. This will be the first new EU legislation on nature conservation for over a decade, and also the first one that ever sets legally binding requirements to restore nature. So this is a very important opportunity to strengthen the conservation of Europe's nature 
and we believe that to deliver its full potential, youth should be meaningfully included. So next slide, please. Why should youth be meaningfully included? So we believe that nature restoration is a youth issue at its core and also that youth are central to implementing and championing restoration. Firstly, restoration is an intergenerational equity issue. So if we don't act now, young people and future generations will disproportionately suffer the consequences of biodiversity loss. This means that restoring nature will contribute to justice across generations and will avoid the responsibility and impacts of uh, biodiversity loss to be shifted to future generations. In second place, and perhaps a bit more encouragingly, youth can also be a vital part of the solution uh, to biodiversity loss if we're adequately empowered. So youth involvement in restoration will increase general public support for restoration by raising awareness um, and knowledge on the need to restore amongst younger generations. Also engaging youth will ensure the long-term success of restoration action. Restoration in many cases is a very long process and requires action that spans across generations. So involving youth in nature restoration projects, programs and decision-making is important to give them a sense of ownership over these actions and to make sure that these activities continue into the future and beyond the current generation. Then thirdly, young people actually have unique and important knowledge and capacities when it comes to nature restoration. There's many examples of successful youth led uh, initiatives which are restoring nature across Europe and here I would just like to highlight one of them the snow change cooperative which um, my teammates can kindly link to in the chat but this is a rewilding program in Finland that's currently restoring thousands of hectares of forests and peatlands and it does so in close collaboration with local communities indigenous peoples and also the youth the way that it engages youth is um, that it's teamed up with this group of young fishers and is working with them to promote uh, sustainable traditional fishing practices and the idea is that these will be sustained in the long term um, as they're teaching the younger generation how to implement them but importantly to deliver on these valuable contributions that young people can make to restoration it's important that there's resources to help young people engage with restoration so funding should be made available for young people and also young people should be empowered to lead and decide in restoration projects and finally Restoration can create new sustainable jobs and income for young people and can create opportunities to develop new green skills and capacities for future jobs. So restoration can also be key to addressing some youth issues. So with this in mind, next slide, please. A coalition of European youth organizations led by GCE teamed up in November 2021 to publish a position on the EU nature restoration law from the youth perspective, highlighting the importance that the youth is included um, in the law and it called for a strong urgent and ambitious law that fully and genuinely includes youth and also contributes to intergenerational equity and this included three crucial points the first one is genuine and full stakeholder and youth engagement so this has to start from the beginning of the decision making process all the way to the implementation monitoring and review um, of restoration activities and should follow a rights-based approach that recognizing, recognizes the strong links between um, environmental integrity and the rights of local communities and groups such as the youth. The second point is about policy consistency, which includes policy coherence, so ensuring that the law is coherent with other policy areas such as climate and agriculture, policy additionality, so ensuring that it goes beyond existing EU legislation, and then policy linearity so that restoration efforts are distributed fairly over time uh, to avoid that the majority of the work is delayed um, into future decades. And then the third point is on funds and subsidies, making sure that they're aligned with biodiversity and youth so that funding generally contributes to biodiversity um, and is also tracked appropriately and to make funding accessible um, and usable, especially for the youth as a stakeholder. So since we published this position, the European Commission also published um, its proposal for the EU nature restoration law. And firstly, we would like to emphasize once again that we strongly support this proposal and really appreciate its overall ambition, that we're very proud about the strong action that the EU is taking for nature restoration. And it makes me at least personally very hopeful to see the efforts some EU policymakers are making to ensure this is an ambitious and effective law. 
And this is what's inspired us to want to engage with this law and to call for our role in it to be considered so that we can be effectively involved in its design and implementation. And so it's with this in mind that we point out that our original three demands have not been fully met and that we feel that the proposed law does not really go far enough to include young people and to respect intergenerational equity principles. In fact, the law doesn't mention youth at all. So there is still an opportunity to strengthen the inclusion of youth in the law. Next slide, please. So this brings me to our renewed demands. Um, and these demands can be found in more depth in our newly published paper. Actually, it was just published today. So if you want to read um, about them in a bit more depth, please um, do follow the link that we'll share in the chat. But our first demand is that young people should be explicitly mentioned in the law. We think that the law should recognize youth not only as stakeholders, but also as right holders. And we note that while other stakeholders are acknowledged in the proposal, like farmers and businesses, youth is currently not. And we think this is a missed opportunity as recognizing youth would create synergies with um, other youth relevant policies, such as the European Youth Goals under the EU Youth Strategy. And we want to note that this demand is supported by young people across Europe. We circulated a survey which collected opinions of 146 young people from 34 countries and 92% believed that youth should be mentioned in the law. We also want to note that one of the amendments proposed in the draft report presented to the European Parliament's NB Committee does mention youth. Um, and we really welcome this mention, but we also believe that it should go beyond calling for the education and awareness raising to youth to acknowledge the importance of involving youth in terms of their knowledge, skills, and experience, like um, we outlined in the previous slides. Then our second demand is that you should be given early and effective opportunities to participate in the development of national restoration plans, which is the implementation tool envisaged under the proposal. So we believe that the proposal should create uh, meaningful opportunities for youth to be involved in all stages of restoration decision-making from the design of these plans to their implementation, monitoring and review. And then our final demand asks for a stronger respect uh, for the principle of intergenerational equity by ensuring that most action is taking, taken before 2030. So in the current proposal, the bulk of action is beyond 2040 and this we don't think is aligned with the urgency of the crisis or with intergenerational justice. So firstly, we really urge the Council of the EU and the European Parliament to not delay the adoption of the proposal. And then we also believe that the targets should be brought forward as proposed in a recent NGO analysis on the proposal, uh, because we really just want to guarantee that ecosystems will be healthy for future generations. And then finally, we also want to um, mention that we particularly support rewilding as a key restoration measure. So we hope that these demands will be considered during the negotiations of the restoration law and also during its eventual implementation. And we hope that events like this one show that youth is strongly committed to contribute to nature restoration and that we're very hopeful that this new law will be an instrument to strengthen our role and opportunities to be involved in it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julia, for this insightful presentation about not only what the nature restoration law is, but why youth should be included in the implementation of the nature restoration law, how important it is globally speaking. Uh, now to start the discussion with the MEPs. Uh, unfortunately, MEP Christine Schneider from European People's Party, EPP, was not able to join today. However, she was very friendly and sent us a short video where she responded to the three questions that we're going to later also ask Mr. Cesar Luena and Mrs. Jutta Paulus. So let me know if... Hello, hear. my name is Christine Schneider. I'm a member of the European uh, Parliament. I'm from Germany and uh, I'm the Shadow Rapporteur from the EPP group in the Envy Committee for the Nature Restoration Law. And I'm really very, very sorry that I cannot join the European Parliament Youth Dialogue due to an other important appointment in my constituency. But it is a pleasure to be able to share with you some thoughts via this video. You sent me some questions and I try to answer them now. The first question was, what do you see as the role of the youth in nature restoration? Nature restoration concerns everyone with 
our consumption behavior, with our ecological footprint, we all contribute to more or less sustainability, to more or less biodiversity. We are our responsible and called upon. In view of this, our future, the backbone of our society, and this is why I welcome intergenerational discussions like this one very much. Our youth plays a crucial role in the development of our biodiversity for the future. And for me, it's very important that you are discussion politics already in a young age. If we learn behavior and sustainable interaction with nature from an early age, our biodiversity will benefit greatly. And this is why we should start as soon as possible with campaigns and education on this topic in school. The second question was, how does the nature restoration law include youth? The task for my colleagues and me as lawmakers in the European Parliament is to define measures to support nature restoration and nature development. We need to, to make our world fit for the future, also in relation to current and future challenges. You, your youth plays a big role here as well. You will have to continue this direction, and this is why it is so important not to look backwards with the nature restoration law. This is why we have to make sure that we find the best solutions with all modern opinions available and together with everyone involved, the farmers, the urban developers, and the citizens, including the youth. The third question was, how can the youth support the adoption of ambitious nature restoration law? We need an ambitious nature restoration law, and we need to learn from the mistakes that were made in the past. I don't think that an ambitious target is the answer to our problem. We have already rules against biodiversity loose, and they don't work enough. The question is why? The question is not how the youth can support the nature restoration law. It is our responsibility as politicians to set the rules, and it's up to everyone to help to reach this important goal. The old, the young, the farmers, and the urban developers. Nature restoration needs to happen everywhere. Thank you, and I wish you all a fruitful discussion. Bye. So we're very happy that Ms. Christine Schneider sent us this video and that she emphasizes that intergenerational uh, discussions are needed nowadays for big, complex issues such as biodiversity loss and climate change. So we're going to continue this, this discussion now with the two MEPs who have joined today in this European Parliament Youth Dialogue. Again, uh, thank you for joining. And now I'm giving the floor over to my colleague Gaëtan to start asking the questions and start fostering the discussion. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So my name is Gaëtan Deban. I'm project officer in the Natural Restoration Team at GCE. And I will take the lead for the question. So I think that thanks to Julia, we are now all well prepared to start with the opening question. So our first question is, how can the youth support the adoption of an ambitious EU natural restoration law? Uh, I think that maybe we could start uh, with you, Juta Polus. Yes, thank you very much. And actually, um, the, the, the difficulty which we have with this law is that um, contrary to the climate crisis, the biodiversity crisis is not yet has not yet hit people's minds, so to speak. Um, I often get the feedback, oh, you're looking at flower strips and there's a war in Europe. And um, actually, when I tell people, well, how do you think the air you breathe is generated? How do you think the water you drink is purified? How do you think soils are kept fertile? And people are quite surprised when I say, 
this is not possible without the safety net of biodiversity, which is supporting us, which is delivering our resources, our basis of existence and civilization. So I think that we really need a campaign to make it clear to people, this is not just about the beauty of the landscape or the beauty of the animals or the, the right of nature to thrive, which is of course important, but this is really about our basis of living. And um, there, I think we, we really need everyone who knows about it to speak out, to speak loudly about it, to talk to friends, talk to neighbors, talk to colleagues, um, talk, uh, talk about it at school, at university, at work, wherever, and also look, look around where in the community could we maybe create a spot where we could bring back nature, even if it's on a small scale, because the, the um, important thing is that people notice these things. People say, hey, this is beautiful now. Or um, ever since this area was restored, we the birds came back. Or I see many more butterflies than before. Or the river is much more beautiful. Or um, we are we are actually protected from floods because the river has more space now. So bringing bringing home the benefits of nature restoration to people is really a, a huge task, which is tremendously important because the other side is really, yeah, scaremongering saying we'll all starve to death if we um, give nature back some space. Um, we must not put pressure on our farmers. Of course, we'll have to take the farmers with us great, we, will, we don't want to work against the farmers, but we do want to work against the, I might call it that way, the farming industry that puts ever more pressure on nature by using ever more synthetic fertilizers, ever more pesticides, which actually will create cost that the younger generation will have to pay because purifying water is much, much more expensive than keeping it clean in the first place. I'll stop here. Okay, thank you for your for your answer. I think it's uh, really uh, really interesting for sure. Um, I, I I don't think that uh, Mr. Luena is yet here, so maybe we're gonna continue with the with the question if it's okay for no, you. No, I see him. I see yeah? him. Oh, yeah, yeah, perfect. All right. <laughs> Sorry, it's there's many faces on my screen, so <laughs> I just <don't laughs> <get it> to <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you want you me to to repeat the question. Entiendo que es la misma pregunta que a, que a Yuta. Es la misma, ¿verdad? No, no sé qué dinámica seguís. Ya, ya. Maybe Gaetan, you can quickly explain mm. about how to proceed with the translations so that we can understand. Also, Mr. Luena, speaking in Spanish. Yeah, sure. Basically, so just people, you just have to 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 look at the bottom of your screen. You have a a, a, a button with a, the translation, and you have to choose English. And so you you will be able to to understand what uh, Mr. Luena is saying. Bueno, yo creo que eh, si es la primera pregunta veía en el panel que la pregunta era más o menos algo así como el, el papel de los jóvenes en la restauración de la naturaleza. Bueno, no sé si es lo mismo que el papel de los jóvenes en este reglamento, que es distinto. El papel en la restauración a mí me parece que eh, es una de las cosas eh, más interesantes por las que comprometerse. No sé muy bien vuestra procedencia, vuestro, eh, vuestro activismo, no lo sé muy bien dónde lo desarrolláis, pero eh, bueno, entiendo que sois gente comprometida con, con unos valores determinados. Yo os diría que el cambio climático está súper poblado, la lucha contra el cambio climático. Pero la otra parte, la parte de la extinción de las especies, la parte de la degradación de la naturaleza, ahí hay más espacio. A mí me gusta recordar que lo que estamos viviendo desde hace generaciones y vamos a vivir no es solo una crisis climática. Estamos viviendo una crisis planetaria. 
Una parte es la crisis climática, el calentamiento del planeta. La otra parte es la crisis de la naturaleza, la degradación de la naturaleza, la extinción de las especies, la crisis de biodiversidad. Así que, primer toque, digamos, o primera opinión es qué papel tienen que tener los jóvenes, un papel mayor en los asuntos de la naturaleza y de restauración de la naturaleza. Un papel mayor, un papel más activo, un papel más protagonista. Y eh, veo que hay, veo que hay eh, bueno, preguntas que más o menos vienen a ser lo mismo, pero yo creo que tenéis que hacer mucho ruido. Mucho ruido, este es un reglamento, eh, he visto que habéis traído a Christine Schneider, que representa al PP, por aquí está Yuta, que es de los verdes. Vamos a trabajar siete grupos políticos, creo que cinco más que otros, con, o con más interés en sacar algo, no voy a decir los, las procedencias ni los nombres, pero lo cierto es que va a ser difícil, eh, va a ser una tramitación difícil. La restauración de la naturaleza, fijaos lo que os voy a decir, tiene muchos enemigos. Por algo será. Hay mucha gente que no quiere que haya una legislación directa, de aplicación directa y de obligatorio cumplimiento para los Estados miembros de restauración de la naturaleza. Cuando hay mucha gente que no quiere algo, por algo será. Y esto también es uh, una idea que os lanzo. Así que esta última parte de lo que os decía yo también me parece muy importante. El cuidado de los bosques, el cuidado eh, de los ríos, la protección de los hábitats, la restauración de ciertos ecosistemas. Todo eso necesitamos organizarlo, ordenarlo, verlo por hábitats, por ecosistemas, por países. Y a partir de ahí establecer una política de restauración ambiciosa, hemos firmado en la cumbre en Canadá un 30% de objetivos de protección. Estamos discutiendo la propuesta de salida, sabéis, de la comisión es un 20. Vamos a intentar llevar el debate hasta el 30. Va a ser difícil, ya os lo digo, ¿eh? va a ser difícil. Este Parlamento ha tenido consenso en torno a las leyes climáticas al principio de la legislatura. Eh, ha tenido consenso... En la, mayoría, en la mayoría de las políticas de eh, contracíclicas económicas post-pandémicas, Next Generation, Repower, etc. Estamos teniendo también bastante, bastante acuerdo en torno a cómo hay que ayudar a una democracia como Ucrania ante un ataque exterior. Sin embargo, ese consenso no se va a poder repetir en algunas leyes importantes eh, las pesticidas es otra y es la de restauración de la naturaleza. Bueno, no sé muy bien si, si estoy respondiendo directamente a lo que queríais, pero normalmente a mí me parece muy bien las preguntas que hagáis. Como se, en español decimos, pregunte usted lo que quiera y yo responderé lo que me dé la gana. Y yo entiendo que la intérprete, y a, seguro que algún español español habrá entre los 31 participantes, eh, pues eh, entenderán. Pero creo que, que lo importante que os quería trasladar es esto. Y si un día, a ver si un día podemos vernos en, en persona, porque veo que estaréis cada uno en nuestro país. Si algún día os juntáis, quien quiera que seáis, como organización, me refiero, en Bruselas me avisáis para saludaros. ¿Tengo que responder a más preguntas? ¿O sí, no? Um, y... Maybe just I'm 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 just gonna maybe uh, ask also to to Miss uh, Paulus to talk about like what's uh, the the role she could see for for youth because you we already speak about that like the role of youth so maybe um, Miss Paulus you can also uh, talk about this and then we're gonna go to the the last question if it's okay for you. Could you repeat because I just there was a, um, a weird noise and I didn't catch all of it. The connection is not so great. Sorry. It's okay, no problem. So, so I just say that um, uh, Mr. Uh, Luena already spoke a, a bit about the the, the role of youth. Uh, maybe you could also uh, um, uh, talk about what role do you see for youth in supporting nature restoration. Yes, thank you very much. So aside from campaigning, you mean, I mean, um, you already have have a great group of people that are working actively on restoration. I think that is really a good thing. And um, we also 
tried to, to bring that forward on the EU level um, previously when my colleague Stefanuta, Nico Stefanuta from Romania and I forwarded a pilot project on the EU level, strengthening the green belt. The green belt is the former um, Iron Curtain, which runs from the North Cape down to the Black Sea, and which could be the backbone actually for nature restoration in Europe. And the pilot project Best Belt brings together on the community level um, initiatives that are working on nature protection and restoration. And there, of course, it is a great opportunity also for young people to become active and actually be supported uh, by the European Union in working on nature. And I think, I mean, I also know a bunch of people in my hometown who have been engaging in um, making making forests, let's say, more, more natural again, right? So um, taking out spruces where they don't belong, planting trees there which do belong there, really tending them, looking after them. And I think that is something where young people really, I think those people are now friends for life, right? Because if you engage on such an activity together, then that's that creates a very strong bond. But aside from doing hands-on work, I think it's also important to be a nuisance, right? To go up to companies and say to them, hey, do you actually know what your activities do to, do to biodiversity? How about thinking of compensation? How about doing something on nature restoration in order to, to um, decrease your own ecological footprint? Because usually a company buys things from wherever, they don't even know what's um, what's in their basket, so to speak. And um, I've often heard from companies, well, but we don't farm and we don't use actually land. So we've got nothing to do with um, destruction of nature or pressure on nature. And I'm always like, yeah, but you do use resources, don't you? And aside from agriculture, mining is of course a huge pressure that is put, in, put on our ecosystem. So um, pushing on companies to taking responsibility to, um, to make them look for responsible sourcing for suppliers which are actually remediating their impact on nature that could also be a huge um, a huge impact because I mean fortunately at least in my home country in Germany um, workers are becoming a very rare species so young people can more or less choose where to work and everyone is looking for them so basically by saying well I'm choosing for which company I want to work you can really put pressure on companies. And that is something where, um, where you really can make an impact. And I would be happy to hear that you're planning to do so. Yeah, of course, thank you. It was really, really interesting. Thank you. Um, and uh, for the role, yeah, uh, yeah may maybe Mr. Luena, I don't know if you want to add something about really the role of youth. You have already spoken about it uh, uh, earlier, but I don't know if you want to add anything. Sí, sí, brevemente, shortly. Sí, sí, brevemente. Eh, dos, dos ideas de, de cómo creo que tenéis que participar, dos ideas muy concretas. Primero, yo he planteado una enmienda para que haya un procedimiento de participación regulado en el reglamento y que los países, a la hora de elaborar, como sabéis que tienen que elaborar un plan estratégico, un plan nacional, eh, expliciten cómo va a participar la sociedad civil, el público, este concepto que en inglés se dice public, o ciudadanos, diríamos en Europa, que se especifique. Entonces, si lo conseguimos, yo lo que os, os animo a que esta, esta organización que tenéis eh, seáis capaces de tener asociaciones constituidas para que podáis participar como parte, como stakeholder siempre en la elaboración de los planes nacionales, porque van a estar los agricultores, los que venden madera, los que les interesan los ríos, los pescadores, va a estar todo el mundo y tenéis que estar vosotros. Entonces, eh, id constituyendo asociaciones jurídicas, legales, porque sois un stakeholder vosotros, como generación. Los agricultores, por supuesto, los madereros, por supuesto, los pescadores, los otros, los que tienen problemas con los paisajes, todos, 
las, las NGOs, of course, pero vosotros como generación sois un stakeholder, así que moveros para que tengáis en los países lobbies. Y dos, a través de la educación. A mí me gustaría, no lo hemos podido poner así, porque el programa Erasmus es otro, en su día se lo dije a la comisaria responsable, pero yo creo que tendría que haber un Erasmus verde, que hay partes, pero concreto, es decir, un Erasmus de restauración, de voluntariado y que incorpore eh, una educación específica en, en este ámbito. Primero, en la educación secundaria, en la obligatoria, etcétera, pero después en el ámbito universitario que favoreciera el intercambio eh, con el objetivo de restaurar eh, hábitats, ecosistemas, ríos, etcétera, en, eh, en otros países. Yo creo que sería algo bonito, es lo que quería completar. Thank you. And yeah, I think it's really relevant all, everything that you have said. And education is also is really important, but it's also about participation, like you said, like real participation and a chance for youth to be heard. So it's really something we are chasing for. So I think it's really a, a thank you to to raise that that point because yeah, it's it's really something that matters for us. Um, To continue, I'll go with the last question. So maybe uh, let's be short on this because we also want to take some question from the from the audience. So for the last question, it's it's how does the nature restoration law currently involve use for you? Uh, so we, you have already spoken about what we we could do, what we should do, but for now, what do you think could still miss? I mean, uh, maybe we can we can start with you now, Mr. Luena, and then we can go to to you, Mrs. Uh, Polis. Sí, que entiendo que preguntas, eh, Gaitan, te veo ahí. Eh, creo que preguntas qué podéis hacer para apoyar este reglamento en concreto, ¿no? Um, no, more like um, act currently, what's um, um, currently in the natural restoration law, uh, all is used involved, like for the moment, what, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if it's more much clear. Ajá, ajá, ajá. Bueno, yo creo que en ese artículo que no está, que la proposición de la comisión no, es, no está, no, no hay ninguna incorporación, digamos, ninguna percepción eh, estratificada o, o especificada por edades. Pero por eso yo antes os, os, os decía que quería meter este artículo donde se hable de la participación y ahí tenéis que estar. Y por otro lado, eh, en la parte educativa, ¿vale? que serían las dos partes en las que yo creo que me, podéis tener un encaje. Pero bueno, vuelvo al viejo, al viejo refrán español, al de All Spanish Idiom, que es lo de preguntar lo que queráis, yo responderé lo que os dé la gana. Tenéis que dar mucho ruido, no sé la capacidad que tenéis, no sé la capacidad que tenéis de mover, de moveros, pero eh, tenéis que armar bastante ruido. Aquí eh, hay dificultades, hay problemas, hay problemas, eh, en el resto de leyes verdes de European Green Deal, el PP ha estado, en esta no está. Y cuando no está el PP, hay un problema, porque eh, hay, hay más derecha de la que parece en el Parlamento Europeo. ¿eh? Esto también os lo, os lo aviso. ¿eh? Hay más derecha de la que parece. ¿eh? Está Identidad y Democracia, está ECR y después está una parte de los liberales. Y en el otro lado está Utah y su grupo, el mío, y la left. De tal manera que necesitamos que el PP esté al bordo. Por tanto, primer mensaje, eh, debéis de hacer presión o debéis de dirigir vuestras acciones, vuestras reivindicaciones al PP. Y so, al PP, sobre todo al PP. La otra derecha no confiemos, pero sí, porque hay una parte del PP que desde el principio ha estado en el Pacto Verde Europeo. ¿Qué pasa? Que la restauración de la naturaleza no forma parte del Pacto Verde Europeo. Eso es lo primero que no debéis olvidar nunca y que tenemos que tener presente siempre. Siempre. Y por otro lado, eh, no os olvidéis de la Comisión Europea. Y tenéis, yo creo que, margen eh, para poder acceder y o poder pedir eh, reuniones con la Comisión Europea, desde la presidenta a los, a los comisarios. Los comisarios están entregados, Timberman, Sinkevichus, los comisarios verdes están entregados a la causa. Así que, bueno, eh, Gaitan, 
por, por, por ser disciplinado. Eh, creo que en la ley podéis aparecer de esa manera, como generación, digamos, como jóvenes, eh, pero tened en cuenta que dentro de 20 años, a lo mejor este reglamento está vigente, ya no seréis jóvenes, o no tanto, seréis como yo, eh, pues es decir, ya abandonando la juventud, y, pero, pero el reglamento tendrá que servir para regular la participación de los jóvenes. Por eso, esas son mis dos ideas. Seguro que Utah tendrá alguna muy parecida, similar, en todo caso, si no, las, las trabajaremos seguro de, de forma conjunta. Pero, vuelvo, aviso a navegantes, es muy importante que os preocupéis del papel, en general en la restauración, en el reglamento, en políticas, de los jóvenes. Pero lo importante es que haya reglamento, porque si no hay reglamento, no sirve de nada el papel que vosotros consigáis ahí, como generación joven. Ahora y para los que sean jóvenes, dentro de 20 años. Que es posible que este reglamento esté en vigor. Entonces, para que veáis un poco que la tarea que estáis haciendo ahora es para muchos años. Ahora, tiene que haber reglamento. Y, y todo lo que nos ayudéis a los parlamentarios a remover conciencias y a que la gente sepa que no estáis dormidos, que la naturaleza es una prioridad y que igual que habéis hecho los eh, viernes de Friday for Future, etcétera, etcétera, que sois, si sois capaces de inventaros un martes por la naturaleza, eso será maravilloso. Os esperamos. Y Gita y yo os alentaremos, eh, nuestros grupos políticos estaremos en lo que nos pidáis apoyándoos. No podemos porque entonces eso sería manipulación e intervención. Y esto tiene que ser una cosa vuestra. Ahora, habéis hecho de todo, no os canséis ahora, porque esto no deja de ser la culminación del Pacto Verde Europeo. Es algo, finalmente, no para vosotros y para los que sean jóvenes dentro de 20 años. Ya me callo porque me va a echar Gaitan de la reunión. Con razón. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, just to say, like, I can guarantee you that you uh, will continue to fight and to raise uh, his voice. So that's uh, that's for sure. And I'll will let you. I'll let, oh, sorry. I'll let you the floor. So, uh, Miss Polis, uh, uh, to 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 add something if you if you want. So. Yes, thank you very much. And actually, I have to confirm what what Caesar already said. Unfortunately, until now, youth doesn't play a role, a special role in the law. And um, as far as I know, um, youth organizations weren't consulted by the commission, um, where I think this is something that even the Conference for the Future of Europe stated that young people should be strong involved in, um, in lawmaking and also in the stakeholder consultation because As they will be the ones that live much longer on this planet than the majority of the voters. Which brings me to my second point. I think um, we should all work towards lowering the, the age when young people are allowed to vote, just for that reason that I just pointed out. Because if you look at the electorate um, in the European Union, I think the, the average age of the European voter is like 55 or something. So this is ridiculous that people that probably will live for maybe 30 more years have, um, can decide about things that will affect especially the younger generation much more than the older one. Um, what I think what young people also can do, call your grandmother, call your aunt, call all the people that are allowed to vote and say, hey, do you want to know what I want for my birthday this year? Vote for my future. Because that is something that everyone can do. Um, apart, so you don't have to wait for governments changing the, the election law, which my party has been fighting for for a very long time, but unfortunately we haven't succeeded yet. Um, what you can also do, or what, what I think would be important um, to improve legislation on a whole, is to have this intergenerational um, view, because if you look at the um, impact assessment, which is done for each and every European law right now, they're only looking at the current situation. They're um, looking at the, at the current socioeconomic impact. They're um, calculating fantastic numbers, how this would impact the industry, what would be the um, additional 
cost and burden for SMEs and all these impressive numbers, but they never speak about the externalized cost, which will have to be paid by future generations. And that is something that urgently needs to be remedied. For example, I've asked the commission multiple times, are you using a shadow carbon price in your calculations of the impact on, on the, the economy? For, for the sectors where we don't have a carbon price. We have a carbon price for industry and for energy, but not for everything else. Are you using a shadow carbon price in order to try to internalize those costs? And they never really gave a concrete answer. I got an answer at staff level um, from a person who said, well, sometimes we use um, 50 euros per ton of CO2. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting because the German Environmental Agency made a calculation and said, in order to really um, take into account the future cost of CO2 being emitted, you should use a price of 640 euros per ton of CO2. This is not done nowhere. And it's even worse when it comes to biodiversity because it's much more difficult to attach it to a single to a single activity. So that is something where I would like also to have a, a bigger role for the um, European Environment Agency, who are really doing great work on all issues that have to do with the environment, be it biodiversity, climate, health, air pollution oceans they really have a, a wealth of data but they are not allowed to do policy recommendations but i rely on their on their reports a lot for my work here in the european parliament and um i think it would be a nice idea maybe to turn to them i will do so i promise um to ask them how they um, could imagine to involve young people more or to shine a light on 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 the future generational issues. Um, I will have an exchange with them anyway, and I put it down in my notes, so I will ask them. Thank you. Thanks to you. And 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 yeah, we will try to do something to uh, on our side, maybe. <laughs> um, then I think we, we are really running out of time. So maybe we're gonna go to, to the question from the audience. I don't know if the audience wants to start to ask question. You can do it. Uh, you can raise your hand in the chat in the bottom of the screen you have a button in the reaction you can raise your hand if you want to ask your question orally or you can also just put it in the chat and we're going to read it for you um and if we, if there are no question we also have a pool of question on the side uh that you already asked when you registered to the event so i don't know what uh, what you prefer and that, yeah just yeah, Gaetan, I have a suggestion because yeah. I see that in the chat there's a very interesting question from Jessica and we're really running out of time. So I think unfortunately we won't have time for much more. Jessica, do you want to ask the question yourself by unmuting? Otherwise we can read it out for you. Okay, well, we will read it out. Uh, Mrs. Jutta Paulos, Mr. Cesar Luena, are you willing to push for the inclusion of youth in the text in the nature restoration law and get the parties, S&D and Greens involved to support it as well? If not, who would have this kind of leverage and could they get help us, uh, could they help us get in contact? So I think that's a very straightforward question, but I think it's very nice also to close this discussion. I mean, easy, too easy. Yes, 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 of course. Easy, easy. Yes, of course. That was very Nothing to add here. <laughs> okay. But I would say on the second, on the second part of the question, is there who else is maybe susceptible to help us also get youth more involved in the, in the nature restoration law? Because of course, we see that you have both a very strong, let's say, a strong position on youth being involved, but who else here is uh, an ally? In my case, with me, it would be good, but if you want, write to eh, Irache Garcia, the president of our group, y decirle que estáis interesados. Ella me va a llamar a mí y me va a decir que lo haga yo, pero es que nosotros lo vamos a hacer. 
estáis entre las prioridades y entre las preocupaciones. Entonces, respondía de una manera muy breve por si queríais preguntar eh, más cosas, para que aprovecháramos el tiempo. Es decir, no tengáis preocupación. Y además intuyo que tampoco vais a tener problema con Utah. Los problemas están en otro lado. Están a este lado. ¿De acuerdo? En la derecha de la cámara, me refiero. Ahí están los problemas. Nosotros no tenemos ningún problema en eso. Pero escribirle a Irache, y si un día estáis por Bruselas, a Irache García, la presidenta de mi grupo, le pedís que os reciba. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Paulus, do you want to, to add something on that? Uh, yes, I think, um, I mean, we, we frequently see those mailing actions to MEPs on which um, many NGOs resort to, but also other associations. And usually, I'm, I'm being very frank with you, what happens is you get hundreds of thousands of emails, they all have the same subject, they all have the same um, sentences. And what I'm doing, I'm creating a rule and outlook and they're automatically filed into a certain folder. And at some time um, we draft, a, a how do you call it, a mass mail, so to speak, and answering all of them at the same time. And it doesn't make a lot of an impression, to be very honest. Um, but what does make an impression is when people send you by mail, by real mail, on paper, something where they say, hey, I'm really worried about this and that, because then you're much more inclined to read it and to take it into account. And that is something that is especially true for, as Cesar has said, for our colleagues from, from the right spectrum. So write them letters doesn't have to be a long letter. Just write them a letter saying, hi, I'm worried about this and that. For example, I'm worried about declining pollinator populations because I'm afraid that I, my children won't have enough to eat anymore. Please, what are you doing about it? Just very short, very brief, very concrete because that is much harder to ignore than something digital which you, where you can just press delete. Okay, thank you very much for this very honest answer. I know that we're actually already out of time, but um, if both Mrs. Paulus and uh, Mr. Luina still have time for this last question from Julia Testa, who was also a project officer uh, in, our, uh, on, in our nature restoration team. Uh, I think this one is very, very important. So maybe if you can try to just give us a one minute overview. Basically the question is young people and young professionals are very active and mobilized in different ways already as this advocacy project has shown and this, this European Parliament Youth Dialogue, of course, mostly on volunteering basis. That's also the case for us, but sometimes what is lacking is enabling space, opportunity, and even fundings. So do you have any suggestion on how to ask effectively for this? That will be the last question of this European Parliament Youth Dialogue. I don't really have an idea, actually. That is also an answer. <laughs> Mr. Luina, do you have something? Tenéis, yo creo que tenéis que, tenéis que mostrar la, la capacidad de movilización que podéis generar. Eh... Primero, no, no olvidéis lo de organizaros concretamente eh, en los Estados miembros para poder participar en la elaboración de los planes estratégicos. Y después, yo creo que, no sé qué tipo de organización sois, pero yo en esto soy, digamos, que bebo de las fuentes clásicas y yo creo que las redes sociales están muy bien, las campañas transversales, todo ese tipo de cosas están bien, ¿no? Pero eh, si tenéis algún tipo de organización eh, concreta que tenga después presencia en las universidades, que tenga presencia en, eh, en las asociaciones de carácter estatal en los países miembros, porque aquí se ventilan siempre esos dos niveles, ¿no? Los niveles son los Estados miembros, es el Consejo de la Unión Europea y el Consejo Europeo, es muy importante, ¿no? Así que yo creo que... Mmm, que tenéis que tener capacidad de organización y, y luego montar ruido. Montar ruido. Lo de las cartas que dice Yuta me parece muy bien. 
pero si podéis hacer ruido eh, estaría muy bien y os puedo asegurar que, que a veces parece que no, pero, pero es efectivo. ¿eh? Yo lo que no sé es la capacidad que tenéis de movilización, no sé, es que no, no, os, no os conozco, perdonadme. Eso habla bien de mí porque podía haber hecho un chequeo, una investigación, a ver con quién voy a estar esta tarde un rato, pero no lo he hecho porque no hay más que las caras, ya se os ve que sois buena gente. Pero a lo mejor no tenéis que ser tan buena gente. Eso también podría ser mi reflexión final. A veces no ser tan buena gente por una buena causa... Bueno, ya me entendéis, hablo siempre en términos irónicos. ¿eh? La ironía es... Eh, el escritor Cesare Tocayo, Cesare Pavese, decía que la ironía es la marca de la modernidad. Os habéis dado cuenta que casi todo lo que digo es irónico, pero en el fondo es verdad. Así que, eh, bueno, pues también tenéis que dar un poquito de ruido. A eso me refiero cuando digo que tampoco tenéis que ser tan buenos. Está muy bien la participación, está muy bien, pero tendréis que dar un poquito de ruido. No estoy diciendo que vayáis a hacer el tonto, a lo mejor alguno lo habéis hecho, me parecerá mal, que vayáis a hacer el tonto y manchéis un cuadro de Picasso en el Museo del Prado en Madrid. Eso me parece bullshit, ¿de acuerdo? No me estoy refiriendo a eso, pero me estoy refiriendo a que también tengáis presencia física. Ahora parece que con hacer un hashtag y muchas menciones y mucha tal, yo soy de los que creo que las redes sociales, como además cada vez van a querer explotarlas más económicamente, se van a ir al garete, porque las redes sociales son para comunicarse y vosotros sabéis que en realidad son un espacio de incomunicación o de autocomunicación y, un, y en definitiva un vomitorio de ansiedades, ¿de acuerdo? Por eso igual recuperar no solo las cartas, sino también la movilización física, estaría muy bien, eh, te, podríamos ver la manera que podemos tener entre Yuta y yo con las posibilidades que hay en el Parlamento de ayudaros, pero estaría muy bien que intentéis montaros como grupo europeo, pan europeo y, eh, y juvenil, eh, una visita a Bruselas, pero como si fuerais un stakeholder. Coño, es que aquí vienen de todas las empresas, de todo. Mira, he recibido a gente de Finlandia y de Suecia que se dedica a vender madera, tablas para hacer armarios. He recibido a 500.000 en este reglamento. No he recibido ninguna, bueno, alguna, alguna. Algunos chavales vinculados normalmente a ONGs o a grupos ecologistas. Pero no he recibido a ninguna asociación que esté preocupada por el futuro con carácter joven como vosotros. Yo, si queréis, estarán escuchándome en el otro lado de donde os hablo, que es mi equipo, y estarán diciendo más trabajo. Bueno, pues ya lo siento, y si no, no habéis preguntado. Yo, si queréis, os eh, ayudamos a montaros una misión en Bruselas. Que vengáis, que os reciban en el Parlamento. No nosotros, que os reciban los de derecha, si les decís, oye... Eh, cabrones, que, que nosotros tenemos que saber que queremos una ley de reglamento de la naturaleza, que queremos futuro, que queremos planeta, y os eh, montamos reuniones con la Comisión Europea y montáis un poquito de ruido y llamáis, ponéis un par de tweets, no vaya a ser que alguien os diga algo, pero también habláis con periodistas. Pero, pero para eso supongo que seréis una organización seria, que movéis, que, que movéis y que tenéis gente detrás. Si de verdad movéis, tenéis respaldo detrás y aquí hay masa, pues eh, hablo tanto que Gita se ha ido. Esto pasa en los comités. Bueno, no, es que me parece que esto es una buena oportunidad. Veo que sois eh, 28, vamos descendiendo, por tanto, habrá que terminar aquí. Pero eh, si hay calor, si hay masa detrás, os podemos ayudar a que vengáis aquí y a que ejerzáis como stakeholder. Si no, haremos una reunión online como esta, haréis cuatro cositas por ahí, pero mañana a quien voy a recibir es al que vende madera de Finlandia, no a vosotros. No sé si habéis preguntado esto, pero yo respondo esto. Es un elemento de la respuesta. Gracias mucho. Creo que ahora estamos realmente fuera de tiempo. Voy a compartir mi screen de nuevo para terminar este diálogo europeo del Parlamento de Juve. Tal vez, Julia, ¿quieres decir una quick word? Yeah, so I'll try to quickly wrap up, but just first of all, thank you so much uh, to both Hesaruena and Jutopoulos for joining us. This was a super interesting discussion. And also thank you very much to everyone who participated and who asked questions. It's great to have opportunities to actually speak with EU policymakers on these topics and yeah, get these very invigorating discussions going. And I think my big takeaway is this one about making noise. We have to, as to put it, be a nuisance or like, make our voices heard, make it clear that biodiversity is on par 
with climate change as an issue that we have to address in order to secure a safe future for us and future generations. Um, so it's with this message then that we can close this meeting and also please do reach out if you have any feedback, comments or questions. We have our email here in the slide. We really would love to hear from any of you, especially if you want to be involved and if you want to stay in um, connected with us and also learn more about what we're doing on the Nature Restoration Law and how you can be involved, please follow us on social media. Thank you again, everyone. And yeah, let's make some noise for nature. Thank you.